You're listening to the Chris R. Jenny Show, featuring Deech on WCOM LP Chapel Hill and Carborough. Stage. That was a that was a jaunty tune. Good evening, friends. Good evening, friendos and frenemies. All those we hold near and dear, Deej. And everybody we hate. Yeah. Everyone's welcome to listen to this crazy show. Yeah, even the jerks. Friday night in car, bro, Deej. Yeah. What, what else do you want to be doing besides the Chris or Jenny show featuring Deej? What an evening. I, uh, so first of all, we got to talk about the squids uh, playing in the championship game last night. If we ever started a show without talking about the squids, it would suck. So please go right. right. So, uh, you know, the squids made the championship game for the second time in franchise history, two seasons a year uh, going back to 2010. So this is roughly 20 seasons. We're playing in our second championship and we lost, you know, we we put up a good fight. It was fun. We, We got a, we got a trophy. It's not quite as tall as the other trophy. Do they purposely make the second place trophy shorter than the first place trophy, Deej? Um, it is shorter than the championship trophy we won in 2018. I, I put it up in my uh, my little trophy wall yeah. uh, leading down to my basement, and uh, uh, it's it's a good two inches shorter. The trophy uh, wall is looking good though. Yeah, it's, it's starting to fill out. Yeah, I got two trophies, a medal, a uh, little little frog figurine, uh, bowling pin. Yeah. Times are good on the trophy wall. I really like a couple things that you did this year. One, okay. just retaining the services of Billy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, you yeah. think he's a fixture, or do you think this is a temporary situation? Hey, we'll see. It could be a bit of a touchy uh, subject. I think I'm going to give everybody a week to kind of percolate and figure out what's going on in the fall. Uh, you know, if his old team comes back, I wouldn't blame him if he went back, but uh, maybe we won him over. I don't maybe know. We'll we see. Him over. We'll see. I hope we did. Yeah. I'd love to have him back. And then same question about Mark. He's a new. He's new to the league. Um, yeah. If same same deal. Uh, you know, he's he's Billy's uh, friend. Billy referred him, so they might be a package deal. But uh, well, well kinda... but the fact that they both live in my neighborhood, maybe we're the package. Maybe maybe the, maybe the squids are the package. Maybe it's a, a three way package, like we... like Total Recall. <laughs> we certainly have more fun than that other team. Yeah. I think so. Remember, remember Total Recall. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't. You, you don't totally recall the, the scene I'm referring <laughs> I do to. Do not. All right, it's sorry. all right. It's all right. As long as one person out there knows what I'm talking about. But what I have to do for the audience tonight, folks, this is a, a rare example of where radio just doesn't do justice to the outfit that my good friend and partner Deej is wearing. So I'm just yeah. going to describe it. Yeah. 
I'm going to start from the bottom and work my way up. So he's got a nice pair of uh, like a like a loafer, similar to what I'm wearing, like a boat shoe yeah, type. Yeah, the, the kind of a maybe a, what is that a seersucker pattern? A comfortable seersucker kind shoe. Of, kind of got like an uh, like a, a '70s style stripey uh, olive into black uh, a dissension. It's kind of like a light olive, dark olive, black. Pulled up blue socks all the way up to well, Sh- most Shanghai. of the way. Up. Yeah, uh, red shorts. Yeah, and his dead horse Alaska T-shirt, and yep. then he tops it off with the Durham Bulls hat. Yeah, this is the look, my friends. Yep, this, this is what is all the, the kids look. are wearing. This is what the kids are wearing. I love it. The the Paris of the Piedmont. That's right. When you're in the Paris of the Piedmont, you yep. got to dress. When you walk down the street, you're on the catwalk. Appropriately, that's exactly. Main right. Street is is a catwalk. That's exactly right. Twenty four seven catwalk. So something I wanted to run by you. Yeah. I've got an idea for a fundraiser for this radio station. Okay. You know that WCOM is is broke. Broke is a joke. From time to time, we try to chip in and where we can. Yeah. I like having events. I, I have ideas. I like doing mm. things. All right. I am planning a disc golf outing. Mm-hmm. As a fundraiser for this station, mm, there's a court. Fun. There's a course at Anderson Park. Yeah, three miles from where we're sitting right now. Mm-hmm. Anyone can play disc golf. It's true. If you can throw a disc, you can play disc golf. Even if you're short, height doesn't matter. Weight it doesn't. If you have matter. like green eyes, anybody, anyone at all, anybody can play. Even if your middle name is Gerald, you can play frisbee golf. Well, actually, there is one rule in the PDGA oh. rules against middle name Gerald's. Uh, but everybody else, Deej. Sorry, Gerald's. So uh, so that's the idea. I've been kicking it around. Grateful Dave's been helping me think through it. Um, mm. I've already got the permit. Well, I've applied for the permit with the city. Yeah. I've got an ice cream truck lined up. Tight. Uh, Play It Again Sports says they want to be involved. Slick. Uh, I'm talking to my friend, the, the owner of Lawson Hammocks, mm. to get a hammock as a, a prize. Yeah. I've been kind of working through this for a little while. And that's the idea that I'm kicking around right All now. Right. I'm getting ready. I'm, this is actually the first time I guess we're talking about it on the air. Could be. Yeah. But uh, Could so be. that may be a thing that happens the last Saturday in August. Initial thoughts, Deej. Uh, that sounds fun. When I was in, in school, uh, a couple of friends of mine and I would play urban Frisbee golf. And that's basically the whole city is your Frisbee golf course. Sure, I've done that. Yeah. So, yeah. So you get together and you're like, okay, the goal, instead of being, you know, some chains against a pole. The goal is like that tree, you know, two blocks ahead. And uh, it's kind of fun. So there is an actual course at Anderson Park is where we'd have this event. But when I was little, I did what you're talking about, but we did it with a soccer ball. Mm. Like from here to, uh, you know, that car across the street, how many kicks to get it to there? Yeah, that could be good. So we're well, seeing, hey, I'm, I'm kicking, yeah. the, I'm kicking the idea around. I've, I've engaged folks in the disc golf community. I'm just, mm. just now kind of putting this thing to light. Jenny mm. of the Chris or Jenny show said yeah. she'd play music throughout the day. All right. And like uh, on her ukulele? Uh, no, no, no. Like set up a DJ box. Oh, okay. Like, like a, a DJ. boom box up on her shoulder. Yeah, she, yeah. she her... Um, Lloyd Dobler style. Her hidden talent. And actually, we talked about it, I thought, once on this. She longs to be a wedding DJ. Ooh. Here's her niche. You don't have to pay her, but she wants to pick the music. Would you go for that? Uh, Think back. When folks are having wed- weddings, uh, are expensive. Jenny is my friend, so part of me wants to say yes. <laughs> but like... Man, I, like, and your, and your wedding? Like, wouldn't you want? Wouldn't you want control over the music? But her specialty is creating playlists around folks. Yeah. So I think her. I think she would get to know the couple if she didn't know them already, hmm. and then rock out a playlist that they would love. What she doesn't want is that nitpicky two hours before the wedding. Can you make mm. sure and play? Yeah. Who, new like, kids on the block. Yeah. That's, that's um, what the kids and are. Deej, weddings are freaking expensive. Uh, they are. They're back with a vengeance now no. that the pandemic is over. Okay. Or uh, on its way to being over. Yeah. And so, o- overish. What do you pay a, uh, a wedding DJ? I, I, I would guess a couple thousand bucks. Yeah. So there's but, just a line that, item. That's the order of magnitude. Anyway, so yeah, she said she would do the music. Now, here's the big question, Deej. Yeah. This is what I'm trying to decide. Okay. So, my disc golf tournament, I'm going to have recreational players and competitive players. Okay. The game has exploded in popularity yeah. during the pandemic. It's been kind of slowly, steadily growing for decades. Mm-hmm. I first played 25 years ago. And so I think there's a lot of very serious players out there. And also guys and girls that just yeah. picked it up during the pandemic or yeah. it's it's exercise, it's free. Wanted to get outside, avoid people. So recreational division, competitive division. Okay. Here's what I'm thinking about doing to make a big splash. Tell me if you think it's worth it, Deej. All right. Okay. I could have a hole-in-one challenge. For everybody who plays, if you shoot a hole in one, I can offer a ten thousand dollar prize. Now, is it possible to hit a hole in one at, at Carbro? 
for sure, there's some holes that people have hit hold, holes in one. Is there's a sign where you sign where you write your name if you had an ace. Oh, okay. Unless people are lying. Yes, it's possible. It would have to be a. There are some that it is not possible. I think that's your point. There's, yeah. There's two or three where it's like mathematically and, impossible. Like a corner. Yeah. It would be a situation where it was possible, and it's a long distance, ten thousand dollar prize. Who who fronts that? You. Here's, that's there's the question I was hoping you'd ask, Deej. Great question. Yeah. You can buy hole in one insurance, hmm. whereas for I could spend two hundred dollars, and if if a hundred people sign up, let's say, and one of them gets a hole in one, I, I have the insurance for it. I guess he can get insured for anything, and underwriter will just figure yeah. out the risk and you know whatever it takes for them to profit, they'll, yeah. they'll they'll do it. These type of challenges are common in um, ball golf. I didn't know if they'd have it in disc golf, but here's the thing though: on the one hand, big splash. Maybe people get excited about that. Maybe some people who wouldn't otherwise come out on a Saturday come out. On the other hand, we're only asking for 10 bucks a person. So now my first 20 donations are just out the window. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm balancing that. I guess the way to say it, will 20 extra people sign up to play this, this thing because of the chance of a $10,000 payout? I don't know, man. You, do we know any like actuaries? I think we need a professional to help us out here. A professional what? Like an actuary, someone who... Uh... Who calculates risk for a living, odds and proportions. Well, right there, I think you have the risk. I think you know that the fact that a $10,000 prize costs you $200, I mean, that kind of tells you what you need to know right there. What's that point? Oh, I didn't do the math, but is that like about 0.05% something? I'll ask my actuary. <laughs> we'll, we'll dub it in on the, the podcast. For but you. DJ, you're my actuary. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> Got to brush up on my actuary in this hood. So you're going to think about if you think that would be good. What would you do if you're on my shoes? Uh, you want to think about it and get back to me? Implying I would ever take off these olive loaf. Please olive do not loafers. ever take those off. Yeah. But if you happen to. Please. Uh, yeah. I'll put it in my pipe and smoke it. Think about it. Yeah. Let's get to the guest. All right. Has anybody had a better year than this young man? Mason Vi, mm-hmm. a new member of Old Crow Medicine Show. Wow. I'm going to rock out one of his songs right now, and hopefully he'll call us. All right. Sounds good. So this is uh, Mason Vi's new song, uh, Big City. Here we go. This All is about right. his move from... Uh, Danbury, North Carolina to Nashville, Tennessee. Nice. Beach. Mason in the big city. Let's see what he's got here. City. 
That is Mason Vi, Deej. Big city. Good stuff. And I think we might have the man himself on the phone. Mason, are you there? I'm right here. Woohoo! Welcome, Mason. <laughs> Welcome Happy to, to be here. Thank you all for having me so much. Welcome to the show, brother. Good to hear your voice. Yeah, glad to be here. It's wonderful. Thank you all for playing my song. Oh, man, I love it. So uh, I don't know who in music has had a bigger year than you. <laughs> what a situation you find yourself in. So I want I wanted to dig into it. Um, are you home right now? Are you in Nashville? Actually, I'm not. I'm, I'm about to play at a festival tomorrow out here in Colorado, north of Fort Collins, in a little place called Wellington. Ooh, I lived in Fort and, uh, Collins. I'm here with my bandmates now. We're looking over the ridge, and it's just, I don't know, just beautiful for miles around. Man, yeah. it's, it's wonderful out here. What's the name of the festival? Uh, we're, they're calling it Picking on the Prairie. Nice. Yeah, I think we're kind of the inaugural band. It's a new festival starting up over here. I love it. And, uh, it's going to be cool. That is fantastic. Well, again, welcome to the show, Mason. We're really excited for you. Full disclosure, I'm a huge fan. Um, really a big fan of Old Crow Medicine Show also. I want to dig into that a little bit. Uh, well, let's just start right there. So you're from Danbury, North Carolina, um, and you were yourself a pretty significant you know, solo act. What was it like as far as, you know, did you try out? Did they just reach out to you and say, hey, you want to join up? Like, tell me a little bit about, we'll get into your history, but tell me a little bit about when you first heard from Old Crow that they wanted you uh, in their lineup. It's funny. Uh, I'm the same way. You know, I've, I've been listening to them ever since I was, you know, a baby in a tent. You of know, course. For a while. Yeah. It's funny. The band actually was formed the year I was born. Wow. It gives you an idea. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, they've been a huge influence to me, as I'm sure anyone who's around my age. Oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah. Or, you know, older. Uh, who's in this kind of music scene uh, and has sparked the, the interest of, of bluegrass and old time and, and a lot of hearts of young pickers out there. Yeah. But uh, I got reached out to by Catch Sikor. Yep. Uh, he's the, the lead front man and the fiddle player uh, of the band. He's the only original member still in the band. Hmm. Yeah. But he reached out to me on, on Instagram. You know, he gave me his number on there and said, hey, give me a call. And that was it. Yeah. And it's kind of interesting because I was like, I feel like I've heard that name before, and mm. I look it up. I'm like, okay, Old Crow, wow, awesome. <laughs> you know, I'm a yeah. huge fan, yeah. <laughs> and so it's like, wow, this is great. I wonder what it's about. Yeah. And I called him, and we talked for a moment. He basically totally unveiled upon me that they're looking for a new guitar player, and it would be a tryout. So they offered the fare uh, to go out there to Nashville, paid me for my trip expense. And I went and I tried out a couple months later. It was a really a wonderful experience. I came in the first day, knew a bunch of the songs, and yeah. they were like, okay, why don't you come back tomorrow? And so I came back the next day, and they were like, well, you did real good. That's awesome. Uh, what are you doing tomorrow? And so the next day, me and Ketch, uh, we kind of sat down at his place, and then we wrote a new song. And we both loved it, so it was like, man, this is great. you know. And I, I went home feeling real good about it didn't hear until about two weeks later yeah but it ended up i was joining the band and then they said pack your things move to nashville we need you here oh my god we're about to hit the road on a new tour that is so awesome so what'd you say <laughs> i said oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah you did <laughs> let me think i was all about me what do you say in that situation yeah, yeah. how of cool is that say yes yeah, it's a dream come true. A band that you grew up and joined. Big City is about your move from Danbury, North Carolina. Were you again? You were kind of a big fish in that pond, and then you you, you moved to uh, Nashville. Yeah, in the North Carolina scene. Yeah. So, so okay, that was one of my questions. You weren't already necessarily planning to move to Nashville. The move to Nashville was part of joining um, Old Crow. So it's funny. I did not write this, you know, after the move. I wrote this before the movie. Ah, uh, I wrote this, yeah. And so the whole the whole song was written before I moved to Nashville as like this kind of ode to like wanting to get away from the country. Yeah. And, you know, and a, a feeling that uh, you know it basically surrounds a lot of people from kind of small town county. Yeah. Stuff like that, where it's like, you know, is anything going to happen? That's what the song's about. About wanting just dreaming, you know, yeah. and. Uh, being the dream that I've chased, moved to Nashville, yeah. and then the pandemic hit as well. I was out there during the tornado, too, and that was crazy. <laughs> uh, but yeah. basically, 
moved back home because of financial stuff and et cetera and, yeah. you know, no gigs and all that. Yeah. And got to move back and be with all my buddies again in such a cool scenario now that I'm in, you know, Old Crow. That's amazing, man. That's that really is the American dream. And it's interesting because like Old Crow, again, they're just one of those bands that they've been around for a long time. People know them and love them. Catch. That's interesting. I didn't know for sure. He's the only original member. But the beautiful thing is that gave an opportunity for someone like you. And but you're not I mean, you're not starting out of nowhere. What I've what I've learned about you, you kind of already had a pretty sweet thing going. You've been around festivals since you were 12 years old. So, so you've kind of have already your own thing going, and you're kind of bringing it into what they're already doing. It's just I'm really excited for your future. Thank you so much. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. I even got a message from old Chance McCoy, who used to be their old guitar yeah. player. He's from West Virginia, But, right? you know, amazing. Yeah, and he had knows people that I know, and, like, my dad was in the bluegrass community. And oh, yeah. I think he was friends with friends and all that kind of stuff, and he reached out and told me congratulations. Yeah, and so that was you know a, a cool thing. It's like, just one of those respectful kind of you know due to another dude. Really appreciate that. Yeah, like having an alumni kind of reach out to you, so to speak. Yeah, man, yeah. exactly, man. Yeah. But me and the band, we uh, we just been sitting in and uh, just having so much fun together, just becoming best buddies. The, the road has been just a, a wonderful experience. I've never rode in a big bus before, and having that whole uh, new thing is is just I don't know, it's really just tremendous in my life, the, the, yeah. the, the whole experience entirely. Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah. So, Mason, you're a, you're a guitar player. Um, now, if you were in a rock and roll band, there might be a, a lead guitarist and a rhythm guitarist. Uh, what is the role of the one or more guitars in a, in a bluegrass or, or folk-style uh, band? I play mostly rhythm guitar. Okay. And the lead instrument is primarily the fiddle, gotcha. which catch plays. Yeah. But um, the band is so versatile now, and they've kind of morphed from the original upbringing to now it's kind of like a rock and roll show and an old-time show. Yeah. yeah. And a country show, you know, mixed in the whole thing. It's a variety hour, a medicine show, if yeah. you will, living up to the name. Yeah, yeah. genre straddle. And so we have a bunch of different people in the band who play multiple instruments. I don't only play guitar in the band. I also play git Joe and mandolin. What's a git Joe? And then I... A git Joe is like a guitar, but it's a banjo. Okay. A guitar and a banjo combined, <laughs> gotcha. basically. It's kind of one of those instruments that's always been in the band since the very beginning. The people don't, I think they always just think it's a banjo, but it's a git Joe. They have a banjo player and a git Joe player for many years. Okay. Kevin Hayes was their famous git Joe player in the band. You know, he wrote Humdinger, if you listen to that one. And that's one of those songs that's kind of been passed down to me. Uh, and I've been singing it during the shows, which is a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm a big Dead fan, and like thinking about like I've seen Dead and Company a whole bunch, nice. and seeing like the songs that uh, John Mayer like will sing or somebody else in the band. It's just it's interesting because it's like a legacy song. These songs that are are uh, sang by the people that aren't in the band anymore. Yeah, right. and so it's so much fun figuring out who in the band is going to end up singing that legacy song mm. because catch sang most of them but of course i'm sure you know if you know the band like willie yeah. and critter he didn't sing all a lot as well yeah, yeah that's right how does that feel because like sometimes you'll watch maybe like like an acdc concert and you know the new singer brian John johnson is singing uh a bond scott song you know like do you feel like you have to there's a little pressure to to, to measure up to the previous singer or do you have some leeway to make it your own or yeah. how does that work yeah Definitely, uh, you know, I try to pay a tribute when I sing it to the original singer. And with anything, my suggestion is try to learn it the way, you know, it was originally done, Mm -hmm. and then try to put your own spin on it. And then I always try to find some middle ground in between the two uh, if I can. That's cool. Yeah, because you don't want to replicate it exactly because, you know, you are a new person singing it. But at the same time, you don't want to totally change it. Yeah, and the other thing that I realize, at least for myself, is that, okay, that person did it their way, but I'm not them. Yeah. And so me just totally replicating that is never going to be as good as them doing it. Right, yeah. yeah so, it, But if I bring my own fire to the table, then I'm bringing something new that could, you know, be just as good. Yeah. That's exciting. Or better, or yeah. whatever, you know, you know, it's all up for interpretation. Yeah. Sounds tough to strike that balance. Yeah. And, and that's also like, think about your life. I mean, you're a young guy, you can handle it, but you know, you're Mason Vi, you get this amazing uh, opportunity 
I don't think people realize this, but uh, I think the average fan, I mean, everyone knows Wagon Wheel, right? I mean, to me, in my opinion, yeah. in my opinion, honestly, one of the best songs of all time. What people don't realize, Old Crow has a very deep catalog. <laughs> so if you're you, Mason, yeah. it's like, hey, welcome to the band. Here's 50 songs you got to learn. Like what? Once the excitement kind of wore off of in time to get busy and get down to the grind. I mean, I'm sure you knew some of their songs, but you had a lot of material to learn, right? Oh, yes, I did. <laughs> and there's new songs, too. That Yeah, um, yeah for sure. That yeah. are not on albums that we play at shows, too. And then we will learn. It's really actually a lot of fun because yeah. almost every show will pick a cover or sometimes two or three yeah. that are basically kind of themed after the town that we're in. Ah. So we just played in New Orleans. and So we played all this, you know, riding on the city of New Orleans and like, yeah. um, just a, you know, or like a Mardi Gras kind of tune we played. It's kind of stuff that you'd hear in New Orleans. Yeah. It, and every town is like that. That makes the show so much fun. It's always a you got to keep on your toes, basically. Yeah, I got it. But that's awesome. You had a lot of material to learn. Um, I've seen the band twice, both times at Cocoa Booth Amphitheater in Cary, North Carolina. Where, by the way, Mason, if I read this, nice. clip, you have a show there, though. You have a, a, a solo. I do show. have a show there. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> I'm kind of here standing with the, some of my buddies in the band that are going to be there. Nice. Uh, if you're listening, please come on out because it's going to be a lot of bluegrass fun, progressive bluegrass. If you like Big City, uh, we're going to play that one and a bunch of other songs like it. June 27th, that's a Sunday. Get your tickets if you look up Coca Booth Amphitheater and the date there. Coca or uh, yeah. find the Facebook event online if you look up my page, Mason Vi, Vi is spelled V I A. There you go. Yeah, we'll definitely guide our, our fans to that, uh, our listeners to that. Deej, have you ever been there? I've been to uh, Coca Booth. Uh, I saw. I saw Jim Gaffigan, the comedian there. Oh, yeah, nice. Mason, have you ever performed? Oh, he's hilarious. He's great. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Have you ever performed there, Mason? No, I have not. So it's going to be a totally new experience for me. Here's what's cool about that place. So Cary, North Carolina, I think they get a lot of flack for it. It's kind of a corporate city, kind of a vanilla city. And you, you pull up to Cocoa Booth, and it is, it's kind of like in the middle of an office park. But then you walk through kind of the woods and the pines, and you're just transformed. It's like on the side of a lake. It's just this beautiful venue. It's like an outdoor venue with some covered area. It's a wonderful place to play. I'm very impressed and excited you're playing there. And we're going to be, I'm going to try to be there June 27th, Cocoa Booth. But it's just, Mason, it's a really cool place to, to play, and I'm kind of excited that you're... Now, I don't want to say wrapping up your solo career, um, or, or should I? Like, Well, I mean, yeah. to give you an idea, I mean, I'll, I'm going to just totally be blatantly honest. Tell, do it, I baby. I had this little run for this week, and I had booked a couple shows, but I had to put those for a later date or potentially cancel them yeah. because... Some old crow shows came up, and yeah. I'm not one to to do bad business, so I'm, mm. I'm kind of the mindset that I don't think that uh, there's going to be too many more solo shows. Probably not at all. But I do do live streams, yeah, on my Facebook and on my Instagram, and I'm putting out a new album, and the, you know the pending name is called Poverty Line. Yeah, Big City is the first single on that, but there's some other singles that were kind of released prior to that that were not exactly initially intended to be on this album, but I think are going to be. One is called Mardi Gras, and the other one's called The Flood, and that's on all streaming platforms. And you also go check that out if you get a chance to any fans of Sierra Farrell that are listening. Yeah, that's what I was going to uh, say. In. She sings on Mardi Gras, and yes. that's a cool collab. Uh, I mean, she is just one of the nicest people ever. She's amazing. Never she, get a chance to meet her. She's really got something going on. Yeah, I've been I've been checking her out recently, and uh, and that's a great collaboration with you two. Hey, do you think this the show June twenty second station in? Do you think that's going to happen? That is going to happen. Okay, so, so there's two shows for this tour. Well, I guess three. We're out here in Colorado yeah, right yeah. now. Okay, uh, with my band, not with Old Crow. I got it. Yeah, and we're playing it at Picking on the Prairie, and then Tuesday we play in Nashville, Tennessee at the Station Inn. Yeah. Mm. So if anyone's out there listening in online, go check it out. Yeah. That's a cool venue, too. My buddy Rick Huckabee plays there sometimes. Country Awesome. Singer. Okay, I'll yeah. have to come and check him out. I'm always looking for new mm -hmm. music in Nashville. Yeah, yeah, Rick Huckabee, he's good. And, uh, oh, my brother lives there, too. My brother works for at the Gibson factory, Mason. Oh, nice. Mix. I got some buddies that used to work there. Yeah. Setting up Thunderbird bases. Wonderful. He makes yeah. guitars. The electric ones are there. 
Yeah, he makes the electric. The electric one. No, yeah. no acoustic basses. No, no, no. DJ doesn't like uh, unless they're stand up. He doesn't. Stand like up basses basses are great, but yeah, yeah, acoustic bass. Do you do you have an opinion on acoustic basses? Acoustic bass. Guitars? Oh, I love acoustic basses. Uh, the stand up ones. Stand up. Are, are you yeah. talking about like an acoustic bass guitar? Yeah, yeah. What do you think of those? A- acoustic bass guitar is kind of not cutting it for me uh, yeah, without that's, being plugged in. That's what's DJing, my idea. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of a worst of all worlds, isn't it? It doesn't really like uh like it, it doesn't really do what most people need a, a bass guitar to do. It can't even measure up to an acoustic guitar. I'm not I'm not sure what good they're for. Well, I think that people plug them into an amp and then they give kind of an acoustic sound. Okay. Uh, whereas maybe the uh the electric bass would give more of an electric sound when being plugged in. Okay. But if you're going to go for the acoustic sound playing bass, I would just say, you know, play a stand-up bass. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Um, speaking, of, uh, speaking of stand-up basses, you know who tipped me off to you in the first place and who, who brought you to my attention? Tell me more. Yeah, do you know the band The Tannin Sober Gentlemen? Yes, They're I he- do. I, that's right. Yeah, Ben. Ben, that's the bassist. Right, the, yes. the crazy guy that's ben, stand- Yeah. Yes, I love Ben. He gets so wild <laughs> on that bass. He's got this, like... Uh, I guess it's aluminum it's, base, and I tell you, you could just ride that thing on down the river. He, he, <laughs> he can stand on it. Flaps he, that thing like yeah. crazy. Yeah. Sounded like a steel drum every once in a while. Yeah. But he's amazing. If you if you ever get a chance, uh, go check out the Ten Sober Gentlemen as well. They are awesome, and they put on quite a show. Ben specifically jumps up on top of that bass and yeah. like starts mm. playing it while he's standing up on top of it. I've seen him like pick the whole thing up <laughs> and like play it upside down. Oh yeah. my gosh. And, it's a pretty big instrument, really, especially the one that he has. It's metal, so it's it's got to be heavy. It know? doesn't fit in a Toyota Corolla. <laughs> it's really a feat. Yeah, <laughs> we had him on here, Mason, a couple of weeks ago, and he told us it's marine grade aluminum. It was designed for like military bands on battleships, basically. Like it could be a, literally a submarine. <laughs> Swim on down the river with that. <laughs> Speaking of them, I tell you what, man, they'd be. Old Crow is known for, they always have excellent opening bands. Once you're eventually playing in North Carolina, they'd be a good opening act for you, I think. Oh, I, I'm sure they would. Let's get That's ca- uh, something for somebody higher up. No, I know, I know, I know. But I would, uh, you can message the guys in Old Crow yeah. uh, on uh, the website. The, our management team, I'm sure, will we'll get back to that and figure that out. It'd be great. You know, I'll give them my word, you know, to the, the guys in the band and everybody. That'd be a fun night, specifically in North Carolina. They were the first band I saw post pandemic. They played at cat's cradle. No, not cat's cradle. Local five Oh six. No, the one out there in the country, uh, the Kraken. they played the Kraken. Oh, right. oh, that was yeah. a great show. Now, uh, Mason, you're a, you're a local guy, right? You're from Stokes County, North Carolina. Danbury. Stokes County, Danbury. North Kakalaki. So, yep, Danbury, North Carolina. If you ever heard of Hanging Rock? Yeah, park, yeah, this, kind of, yeah. Of course, yeah. Our local landmark there. Awesome. Nice. All right, so growing up, was there like a dream venue that you were like, I'm going to play there someday? Yeah. And did you get to play there yet? Good story there, actually, because... You know, growing up in a country town, everybody talks about the old Grand Ole Opry. Yeah. 650 WSM. And I tell you what, I finally got to make my Grand Ole Opry debut awesome. in May. And it was, get this, it was my first ever gig. I read Penn. that. I read that. Was playing at Grand Ole Opry. <laughs> Your first ever gig with, uh, and, with Old Crow. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, with Old Crow. Oh, Man. my God. It's like throwing a perfect, perfect game in your major league debut. Yeah. Wow, welcome, that's awesome. Welcome I mean, what a way to start, though. Everyone there was just so happy that, you know, that we were there. The, the coolest thing about it was we were the last band, yeah. and so we closed the night out. Nice. You know, what a way Man, to play the Opry. Beautiful. It was wonderful. Wow. They're actually members of the Grand Ole Opry, so, I, I mean, I think that that's kind of a status thing that is a little bit more than just playing there, so pretty cool to be playing with the band that is a member of the Grand Ole Opry. Yeah. yeah. But what, a, what an honor. Yeah.
Song. Very nice. I love that one too. That's, that whole that whole album is great. That was the one that they won a Grammy with most recently. When you're writing a song, uh, where do you start? Do you kind of come up with lyrics first? Do you come with a melody? Do you like play some chords in your guitar? Do you have like a the whole thing kind of percolating as a as a unit? Or a, how, how do you usually start out the songwriting process? Well, I'll tell you, it's really changed through the years. I used to just kind of sing whatever I was feeling at the moment. And that still works, too. Yeah. I'll tell you what, my dad is the king of that. He can just mm. write a song about anything. He'll just start living his normal, everyday life, and, and you know, we'd be talking or something, and then he'd start singing whatever we were talking. He's just like, there's a song. He, he, he's one of the best. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. it, it's easier than you think. And then, you know, at times I'll also do that kind of thing where it's just like, I'll throw down a whole bunch on the paper and then try to refine it mm-hmm. into something a little bit more um, to a, a bigger audience. Recently, I'll, I'll start doing like titles for the song, and then we write it. So we have an intention in mind. So uh, when you wrote the song with Catch, you're saying you guys sat down in one day and wrote a song? Yeah, it's normally for for me. Um, I'll write a song about an hour with a person. Yeah, oh, wow. It's normally how we'll do it, but it helps to have um, a piece of the song first. Yeah, uh, to really get it down. Right. If you're just starting from nothing, it can be a little harder to to write. But I'll do a lot of co-writing in Nashville. That's what kind of Nashville is really big for. And I had never really done that until I moved out to Nashville. Yeah. And it just kind of changed my whole mindset about writing. Now I don't really like to write without another person just because it, it, it's so much easier uh, writing with someone. Mm. I mentioned Rick Huckabee earlier, and he's done some solo stuff. And he also played with Tracy Lawrence, uh, but he's made a like a 20 plus year career just co-writing songs with people. And it's different. This, there's a specific way that you go about writing songs in Nashville, right? You sit down in an office and spend a day writing a song together. It's almost a little bit like people you know, treat it like a business. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to people who do it for work. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. Um, yeah. So a side little thing I'm doing right now with some buddies in Nashville, we'll write the song, record the song, and then we've been trying to pitch it to this sync company that one of the other writers is connected to and then hopefully that is going to end up getting played in a commercial or a movie or something like that somewhere we haven't had any bites yet but we just played down one monster of a deck the halls track i tell you <laughs> <laughs> it's christmas season right now that they're uh, shooting all the the christmas commercials that's interesting so, <laughs> that's wild kind of did it like a deck the halls funk Ooh, nice. That's cool. <laughs> when you write a song for your, maybe for your solo show, 
Are you up there by yourself, or do you have like a band, or how does that work? Is it Hot Trail? Oh, yep, the Hot Trail Mix. You yeah. got it there. All but, right. It's um, Mason Vi and Hot so Trail Mix. My band gotcha. is called Hot Trail Mix, and I'm, you know, still trying to figure out that whole part of it. Yeah. Uh, it seems like I've been releasing all my albums under my name, mm. um, but the Hot Trail Mix is is just kind of my backing band. Okay. But like, always amazing pickers that are playing with me. Yeah. And that's the the really fun part. I, I really know how to pick them. These guys are playing with me out here in in Colorado. I mean, I couldn't ask for better guys to be playing with. Yeah. And that's uh, one of the uh, luxuries of growing up in a bluegrass community. Yep. Walk yeah, down you, the street and find a band. Yeah, you've been hanging around festivals since you were 12 years old, right? Uh, I got to assume. Yep. M- Merle Fest, uh, Floyd Fest, probably. I mean, you, you've, right, you were probably getting dragged on stage up at a pretty early age, and you've just sort of always been in and around that community. Definitely. But also, to anyone who's out there who's looking for the raw source of this music, you got to go to Gay Lax Fiddlers Convention this year. Gay Lax and, Fiddlers uh, Convention in Gay Lax, Virginia. Virginia. Yep, driven nice. through yeah, it many they're times. They're not paying me to advertise that or nothing, but that's no. just where I learned my chops and honed them. Honed yeah. them. And uh, there's all these people that send their kids off to some music camp or something for the weekend. But my whole thing is just drop them off at the Fiddlers Convention for a week and you know let them pick nonstop all day and night with these world class pickers. That's mm, fantastic. To go there and compete. Oh man, that's great! Uh, oh wow, man, you're living proof. Yeah, yeah, that's exciting. Thank you, I appreciate that so much. Yeah. And by the way, that's a fantastic backing band name. I love that name, Mason Hot Trap. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what's funny, you know, you mentioned that it's kind of this throw together. But we started out playing. If anyone that's listening is familiar with old school '90s Boone, North Carolina, we we had this residency uh-huh. at Murphy's in Boone, nice. which is not there anymore. But okay. um. Murphy's love- was famous for yeah. being the dive bar of Boone. I love Boone. And we had this residency where we were playing almost like every week there because uh, their their booking agent, John Rush, was just booking us like like wildfire. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it was so much fun. So the guy who uh, played mandolin, Zeb Gamble, actually named the band. We always just wondered, is it hot because of some kind of cayenne pepper? <laughs> or is it hot because, you know, it's left out in it's the sa- front seat of your... <laughs> <laughs> of your uh, your Ford Focus for a week or something. In North Carolina in August. Boone is where uh, Doc Watson discovered uh, Catch in the original mm. Old Crow. Uh, they were discovered in Boone yeah, by Doc you know, Watson. And we talk about that a lot because it seems like there's a lot of connections about me and the band uh, through, throughout the years, basically just growing up in the same area. Yeah, mm. that's beautiful. Well, let me rattle off the schedule. So, again, Mason, Vi, and Hot Trail Mix. You got two gigs for sure. The Station Inn in Nashville, June 22nd. Listen to this, Deej. Mm. Old Crow in Nashville, June 25th and 26th. Mm -hmm. And then Mason and Hot Trail Mix, June 27th, Cocoa Booth Amphitheater in Cary. Sweet. You're going to rack up some frequent flyer miles there, brother. Hey, I really need to (laughs) sign up for that. (laughs) (laughs) That's no joke. I mean, Uh, I've been thinking about that. (laughs) And some some other gigs I'm excited about, not too far down the road. So July 22nd, Old Crow's playing uh, Floyd Fest. Yes. That's exciting. I got And we just actually, I think there's going to be some shows in North Carolina. Yeah. Yeah, here's what I got, Mason. I got July 22nd Floyd Fest, and, and then I got July 24th in Charlotte, and July 25th yep. in Wilmington. So maybe that's what you're thinking about. Yeah. You know, yeah, I guess they're announced now. Awesome. Another incredible venue in Wilmington, Deej. It's called Greenfield Amphitheater, right on the water in Wilmington, North Carolina. That's a great venue. Nice. I know, and my girlfriend's family is from Wilmington, so I'm really looking forward to that. Going to be able to get them all into the show, and yeah. I'm sure that they're going to enjoy that a whole bunch. I'm I'm really looking forward to that show a good bit. If I can get uh, someone to watch my daughter, uh, my wife and I will be there, man. I, I really, we love you. Like I said, we've seen you twice, and uh, I can't wait to see what you bring to the band. What's the other uh, new guy's name? There's another His name's name. Mike Harris, and get this, yeah. he's from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Nice. Whoa, just nice. down the trail. Dude, that wild. I'm excited yeah. to see what you two guys bring to the band. August 20th, Columbus, Ohio. Never you, played in Ohio you, before. It's, I tell you what, it, this whole adventure has just been oh, I'm so excited for you. What's the most? so many places I've never gotten to go before, and I just love it. I want you to call back like a year from now, after you've experienced a full summer tour schedule with Old Crow. I can't wait to hear more, man. I know. There's a lot of dates on the calendar that I really am looking forward to. Uh, the, the whole transition for me, because in 2019, I was the Floyd Fest on the rise runner-up band. Yeah, my no, band, I remember. Uh, for that. So 
it's interesting now <laughs> because we're supposed to come back and play. But um, now I'm coming back to play with Old Crow. You right. know, it's like one of the headliners. And it's just like, it feels good, I'll tell you. It yeah. does feel good. But it'll it'll really mean something to me to play in Floyd Fest. That's the one I'm really looking forward to this summer the most. One more I'm excited about, uh, Mason. I'm from Huntington, West Virginia, not far from there, Ashland, Kentucky. Ashland, Kentucky, September 24th. That's wonderful. I mean, I need to check the calendar. You know more than that. I, I got ready for tonight, man. I prepare, believe it or not. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, see, I tell you, I just jump on that bus and uh, I just, wake up in some city. I'm not even sure where I am. So I know. That's the magic I of it. I want to hear more. I really do. Let's plan on getting you back on like around this time next year. Once you've had a full cycle of touring with the, with the old crow under your belt. And uh, I'm just excited for you, man. So, so again, believe it or not, we've already burned through an hour here. Um, anything else on your mind, Mason? Wow. I really just want to pitch uh, my new album yeah. again on Mountain Fever Records. I know I sure would love uh, to have been there in person and to have played some songs into the mic and all that kind of stuff. But uh, we'll get you in, we'll get you yeah. in person down the road. Uh, Mason, where can uh, the folks at oh, home yeah. find you online? Oh, yeah. Make sure to check out Mason Vi on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, I think I'm on TikTok now, too. That's Ooh. the new thing. This is a funny topic because the band is new to TikTok and yeah. they're they're getting me to kind of run the TikTok a little bit and it's fun. Mm. I get I get a little mm. bit of responsibility yeah. and uh, yeah. I'm teaching them how to use it a little bit. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun getting to understand that. Yeah. Uh, thanks for calling in, brother. Thanks for making time. I know you're on the road right now in Colorado. Enjoy that. I'm I'm definitely going to try to catch you guys this summer and uh, yeah, man. Let's hear from you down the road, okay? I would love that. Nice. Thank y'all for having me here. It's been a blast. Yeah, right. man. Thanks, Mason. Great to meet you. All right. Here we go, brother. Take care, man. Good night, everybody. See you, DJ. All right. Have a good one.